ranking the best players from every NBA team. We did this video last year and now it's time to do it again. Right before we start ranking the best player from every position, coming up pretty soon. Before we do start the video though, I gotta ask all of you guys to subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Because while doing some research, I found that over 80% of people that have watched my videos recently aren't subscribed. 30 or 40% I could let slide. But 80? That's just too far. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. I mean, if you're gonna watch anyways, you might as well be the first to find out when there's a new video. But let's not spend too long on that. With that out of the way, let's look at number 30. In the Charlotte Hornets with Terry Rozier. Even though he's last on this list, he isn't playing terrible, averaging about 16 a game right now. And that's the pace I expect him to stay at throughout the year. 29. The Knicks with RJ Barrett. RJ's had a strong start to his NBA career and a better one than I thought he would. He always just gave off the vibe to me that he'd be a bust, but he's been great so far. 28. The Grizzlies with Ja Morant. At this point in time, Ja and RJ could be interchangeable on this list, but I ranked Morant ahead because I think he'll finish out the season stronger and just because Barrett's on the Knicks. And speaking of bad teams, 27 goes to the Orlando Magic and Nikola Vucevic. And you might be surprised to see him ranked here because he was an all-star from last year. But to be honest, the man may have peaked last season. I don't know that he's going to be able to play any better than he did, but up until this point he's still definitely the Magic's best player, which is sad considering all the young talent they have. 26. The Cavs with Kevin Love To be honest, I got nothing. 25. The Bulls with Zach Levine don't get me wrong, I know it sounds bad having Levine ranked at 25, but you can't blame me with the competition ranked ahead of him. He's a great scorer and all, but so far, still can't lead his team to wins. A guy that's been a little bit of a better leader though is number 24's best player, in the Kings who have De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron's ranked slightly ahead of Levine for his total impact on his team. He makes his teammates better, he's a leader, and he makes a difference in terms of wins and losses. The man's a great young point guard right now, and has the potential to be one of the top ones in the NBA in the future if he keeps things going how he has. 23 is another young player with a lot of potential in the Pelicans with Brandon Ingram. After what we saw him go through in LA, I'm hoping that Ingram can keep up the pace that he's at right now all year long. Because while it's currently only the beginning of the season, he's playing as good as everyone's waited for him to be. Currently averaging 26, 7, and 4. I had doubts that he ever would be that good, and there wasn't a lot of signs coming from him back then that would have changed my mind. Up until halfway through last year when, I don't know, something finally clicked for him. And he's been great ever since. And the longer he plays this well, the more he'll deserve to be ranked higher in the future. And while we're still on young players, number 22 goes to the Hawks for Trey Young. I mean, talk about hot starts. So far, really nobody else in Atlanta has really stood out. But that's probably because Trey's taken all the spotlight. And at this point, I'm convinced Trey's this generation Steve Nash. He's 6'1", doesn't look like a superstar, or even your typical NBA player. But he really plays like a star, and the Atlanta Hawks are a perfect fit for him. 21. The Spurs with DeMar DeRozan I mean, this spot for the Spurs could have equally gone to LaMarcus Aldridge because they contribute pretty much equally to the team. But we chose DeMar because LA's 34, so his game's probably going to be declining any time now. Number 20. The Thunder with Chris Paul Currently, Shea Gilgis Alexander is making a run at being OKC's best player. But for now, we can't give it to anyone but CP3. And I don't know what to say about Chris at this point. It's just weird that he's still on the Thunder. And he's clearly not the same player he once was. But the past couple of seasons, he's still been a top 5 point guard in the NBA. So don't let him being on a bad team make you think he's a nobody now. And speaking of being on a bad team, 19 is the Suns with Devin Booker. As soon as the Suns start coming up with winning seasons, will be when Devin Booker starts finally getting the credit he deserves. But until then, he's just a great scorer on a bad team. Who knows though, it could be Phoenix's year. 18. The Jazz and Donovan Mitchell You can tell Mitchell's been putting in work this offseason. He's shown huge improvements to his game in posting up, cutting to the basket, playing on and off the ball, and shooting mid-range. He's always gotten comparisons to Dwayne Wade, but coming out this season, they're more relevant than ever. And in just his third year, Mitchell's been getting better every season. Plus, it's clear that Mike Conley has played as big of a part in his development as everyone expected he would. 17. The Raptors with Pascal Siakam Not gonna lie, Siakam was one of the toughest players to rank. He won the Most Improved Player Award last year, then was the second option on a championship team, and played great in every series on both ends. There's not much left he has to improve to show that he's the real deal. And now to start this year with Kawhi Gone, he's looking like he's having another breakout season. 
The only thing there is left for him to show though is consistency. He can become an elite level player. He's just got to show that he can do it night in and night out in the long run. And once he can do that, he'll deserve to be ranked a lot higher. Another player in a similar position is number 16, with the Mavs and Luka Doncic. And that hurts me to put Doncic at 16. I wanted to put him a lot higher, but hot takes and predictions and ranking videos don't always go over so well. But early in the season so far, the man's putting up 26, 10, and 9 assists a game, and I expect him to keep up a similar pace. In only his second season in the league, he's already shown that he's a team leader, at times a walking triple-double, and without a doubt one of the most skilled players in the NBA. And just like Siakam, the longer he keeps this up, the higher he'll rank. But for now, he's still yet to pl even play in the playoffs or make an all-star team. So it makes sense why he'd rank here. 15. The Pistons with Blake Griffin Blake had a career year last year, and hopefully this season he ends up doing the same thing. But he wasn't able to train or practice at all this offseason because of his knee injury. So let's all just hope he continues on the same path when he comes back. The number 14 is also someone who's dealing with knee injury with the Indiana Pacers and Victor Oladipo. Victor's still got a long way ahead of him before he's going to return, but he'll definitely be back this season, and just like Blake, hopefully he comes back better than he was from where he left off. Last time he was healthy though, he was right up there as a top 3 shooting guard in the league. He's dropped down a little since then, but we'll assume that when he does come back, this is right around where he should rank overall. 13. The Timberwolves with Carl Anthony Towns This year looks like it's going to be Towns' year to take that next big step and we've been waiting on it for a few seasons because after his second season in the league where he put up 25 and 12 he dropped off for a couple years so I'm hoping this is finally when he really steps up to that next level but only time will tell I mean he's got everything you can possibly ask for out of a center he shoots over a 40% from three can block shots post up score defend and rebound he's got all the tools to be the best center in the league he's just not there just yet Number 12, The Wizards with Bradley Beal. In the past year or so with John Wall out, Beal's developed into a 26 point per game scorer to go along with 6 assists and 5 rebounds a game. Which I definitely think now lands him as a top 3 shooting guard in the league, behind James Harden and Klay Thompson when he's healthy. He's an all around great player that could fit in as an all star first or second option on any team in the league. 11. The Miami Heat with Jimmy Butler Jimmy's never really been the type of guy where stats reflect how good he is or has been for a team, because he also does everything on the floor that goes unnoticed. I'm sure if he didn't take so much pride in guarding the other team's best player, diving after loose balls and leading the team, he could average slightly better stats. But that's what makes him who he is, and he's been doing a great job of making the Miami Heat look like a real playoff threat so far something he's been known to do for every team he's been on. Then number 10 goes to the Boston Celtics for Kemba Walker. And Kemba's been quietly having the start to his best season in the league, and it started out doing a much better job with these young Celtics than Kyrie Irving did. Which by the end of the season could even result in Kemba being ranked as a better overall point guard than Irving if Kyrie didn't already have such a great record in the playoffs. But for Kimba, he plays off the ball and gives up entire possessions where he doesn't even touch the ball so the other guys can get involved. Something Kyrie rarely did on this team. But like I said, Kyrie still ranks ahead of him, which is why he's number 9 for the Brooklyn Nets. And yes, I included Kyrie over KD because of Durant's injury. And usually, as I did with Oladipo, I still include injured players because we have a basic idea of how good they'll be when they return, but there's still no telling with KD so I just didn't include him. Overall. Irving's definitely playing the best of his career, but I think what I feared would happen is happening. Individually he's playing great, but the team currently isn't. Then number 8 goes to another point guard from the Trailblazers and Damian Lillard. Dame's still the second best point guard in the league, and I don't think there's any arguing that. And not much needs to be said because his game has really spoken for itself up until this point. Number 7, the 76ers with Joel Embiid. Philly's still looking like the clear favorites to come out of the East, and Joel's playing a huge part in that. The team overall looks like they could be future champions, and with Philly not having to fully rely on Joel because of their depth, it's going to be great for everyone on the team. But Embiid still isn't the best center in the NBA in my opinion, because that spot belongs to the Denver Nuggets best player, who is number 6 in Nikola Jokic. I still think Jokic is the best center in the league, but that could very easily change as the year goes on. And not because Nikola isn't great, but because Towns and Embiid are closing in on him quick, and Jokic's weight problems aren't doing him any favors. He said he's purposely playing heavier this year, so people can't back him down as easy, but so far it's negatively affecting his game. So if things like this keep up, he could lose his spot pretty quick. 
he could definitely lose a spot as the year goes on. Number 5, The Rockets with James Harden. Even with Russell Westbrook on the team, Harden's picked up right where he left off last year, which has been surprising, but great to see. And so far they've made things work a lot better than expected. And the MVP race is going to be closer than ever this year, and Harden could without a doubt win it if the Rockets come out on top of the West. Number 4, The Bucks with Giannis the man who won the MVP last year. And he's playing at a similar pace this season. I mean, he hasn't shown much improvement on his shot, which is disappointing, but hopefully that's gonna change. I mean, pretty soon he is gonna be climbing these rankings even higher. He's just not there quite yet. Number three, the Warriors with Steph Curry. But because of his situation, it's why I have Steph Curry most likely to win the MVP award in 2020. <sighs> I mean, I don't even know anymore. I thought this was Steph's year. I was excited for him to break out again without Durant, and he wasn't even playing that good before the hand injury. At this point, he's just at number three for now, for the little bit of pride I still have left. Number two, the Lakers and LeBron James. It was a very close call on putting LeBron over Anthony Davis, but it had to be done. I haven't been on LeBron's side as much as I should have in the past, but he's still leading this Lakers as good as ever at 35 years old, currently averaging around 25, 11, and 8. And himself and Davis are both equally contributing to the team, but when it comes down to it, James is still the leader, so he's the one that ranks in here. And then the number one spot easily goes to the Clippers and Kawhi Leonard. And there's no arguing with Thanos Jr. here. But because he is here, we had to leave Paul George out of this entire video. But getting ranked as the best player in the NBA for the video more than makes up for it. And hopefully this is a list we can all mostly agree with. Also, as the season goes on, players will definitely deserve to be either moved up or down, depending on how consistent they stay. But for now, this is the list we have. So if you enjoyed it, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.